ladies and hello, Mr. Announcer. Where did Snooks go? Well, she's around here somewhere, Daddy. Are you very angry with her? I'm just terribly disappointed, is all. Oh, his hair will grow back soon. Why, I had my uh. uh it's not that, Mr. Announcer. I know. I knew that was bound to happen sooner or later. Has she done something else? And my wife tells me she's just ransacked all the closets and torn open every one of the Christmas presents we've been hiding. Uh oh. Oh, there she goes now, in the dressing room. I must have a talk with her. See you later, Mr. Announcer. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Snooks. I'm ashamed of you. Why? Mommy told me what you've done. Oh. It wasn't bad enough you cut off all the baby's hair. You had to go and open up the Christmas presents, too. However could you think of two such... Abominable things. Oh, it was easy, Daddy. I had the scissors and then I was finished opening up the presents and Rosphia happened to call on Oh, stop it. it. What's the matter with you? With Christmas so close, you'd think a little girl would go out of her way to be good. You'd think so, wouldn't you, Daddy? Now, don't be smart. I simply, I certainly wouldn't want to get caught opening all the Christmas presents before Christmas. Well, I didn't want to get caught either, but Mom... Silence! <laughs> How is it that Mommy found you with the closet, in the closet, with the presents? She walks awful quiet, Daddy. <laughs> the amazing thing is, you show no sign of remorse. Here it is, less than a week until Christmas, and you behave like a hoodlum. Do you expect Santa Claus to bring you any nice toys? <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? I don't know. The very idea. Ripping open all the packages, people strive to be nice to you, get you lovely presents, and you couldn't even wait a few days. Nah. That's the lowest trick in the world. Is it, Daddy? Oh, it certainly is. Oh, did you see anything for me in there? <laughs> Mommy got you a bathrobe. Oh, yeah. One of those crummy ones like that. Yeah. Same thing. Oh, well. Woman's got the taste of a tout. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Uh, you didn't happen to see what I got Mommy, did you? Uh-huh. A nightgown with no back. And that is the latest thing. That's really a nightgown, isn't it? It's a crummy one like last year. Snooks, just because I said it doesn't mean you have to. Mommy said it too. Oh, she did. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a fine Christmas. And all because you didn't have any patience. What is patience, Dad? I've told you a thousand times. It means being able to wait. Why? Because sometimes it's imperative. <laughs> Suppose a man goes fishing. What man? Oh, any man. Uncle Louie? All right, Uncle Louie. Suppose Uncle Louie goes fishing. Uncle Louie doesn't like to go fishing. I don't care what he likes. I know. I've seen the presents you bought him. Now, never mind the presents. What's the matter with you, anyway? You know. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a very expensive tie. What's he sending me, a grand piano? No, he sent you. No, don't tell me. That's the very thing I'm trying to explain to you. I've got enough patience to wait until Christmas. To see my presents, I don't go snooping around closets. Um. So what do you send me, Snooks? I better not tell you that. Yeah, you're right. I better wait. Yeah. It doesn't matter anyway. No. So uh, <laughs> you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. All right. Oh, what is it? Such a big secret? <laughs> well, I won't tell you what what it is, but uh, yes, yes. It's made out of wood. And it's brown, and you smoke with it. Uh, another pipe. <laughs> Two-bit Louie, ah, oh, cheapskate. And to think I tossed out 39 cents on that tie. I, I bet the pipe's no good. It's good, Daddy. How do you know? I smoked it. <laughs> I feel sick, Daddy. Well, that just serves you right. Maybe you'll have a little more patience from now on. What's patience? I'll tell you as long as you don't interrupt. So suppose a man goes fishing. Not Uncle Louie. No, not Uncle Louie. He's got no time for fishing. He's too busy hoarding. And I have a good mind to tell Santa to bring you anything. I don't care. Oh, you don't? No, I see what he brought me and I don't like it. Snooks, could it be possible that you don't like that beautiful little electric stove? Could that be? Could be. So you don't like the stove? I don't like that stove. Didn't you write Santa and ask him to bring you a stove? Mm -hmm, but now I want a pair of ice skates. Oh, well, that's a loss of another color. <laughs> I want a colored horse, too. I want a colored oh, horse. Oh, cut it out. You can't have a colored horse. Why? Because you can't. You'll take the stove and you'll be happy with it. No, I want ice skates. Oh, you're too young for skates. You're liable to get caught in some thin ice, and I don't want you to have any accidents. Why? Oh, that's not a fair question, and you know it. If you don't tell Santa Claus to bring me ice skates, though... You'll what? I'll, 
I'll eat all the lights off the Christmas tree. Now listen, Snooks. This is not the first time, now this is not the time of year for that kind of behavior. I don't want to have to spank you. I want everybody to be happy and contented in our house. Then buy me a pair of ice skates. Snooks, I'm going to tell you a very sad, sad story about a little boy who wanted ice skates very badly. And he finally got them. Would they fit me? <laughs> yes. Well, this poor ch child lived in a miserable shack with his stepmother and his stepfather. He was only a little lad. Was he a stepladder? <laughs> no, he was an orphan. And these awful people had adopted him and made him work so that they could loaf. And every day they beat him. Where's the skates? I'm coming to the skates! <laughs> well, one Christmas, as the child was selling his papers in the streets, it was freezing, and he had no coat. But he had skates? Not yet! He was shivering in the cold, and he happened to walk past a wonderful toy shop. And there in the window, gleaming, polished, there hung... A salami? No! A pair of skates! Oh. And how this wretched child longed for them. But he only had seven cents in his pocket. And the skates cost a lot more than that. Still, he couldn't resist going into the store. Well, as soon as the storekeeper sized up the situation, he did a very noble thing. He gave the little boy the skates for nothing. That's wonderful. Hmm. He meant well. But the child took the skates and rushed over to the frozen pond. There was a spot where the thin ice wasn't very thick. And the unfortunate child fell through. It was a time before he was rescued, but they got him out. He was barely a spark, spark of life left in him. So they rushed the little tiger over the hospital. And for days, his life hung in the balance. Mm -hmm. Well, in the small hours of the morning, just before Christmas, the end came. The broken-hearted storekeeper blamed himself for the accident, and two days later he passed away from grief. Both gone, the kind storekeeper and the little boy. Now, doesn't that make you stop and think? Mm-hmm. What are you thinking about? What did they do with the skates? <laughs> oh, what's the use? I'll buy you a pair of skates. Come on. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody!